Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this live webinar that is being organized as part of the graphic design virtual work experience powered by us here at SpringPod. Now, whether you have already got started with your program or you're just getting into it, first and foremost, and I always say most importantly, we do hope that you are enjoying it. But also, if you have got any questions or you need some support from a member of our team, don't forget that you can reach us using the green chat icon in the bottom right hand corner of your platform. Now, if you are webinar veterans, you know exactly what's coming up next. But obviously, if you are brand new, it's always handy to know. So we're going to go through a few housekeeping bits. The talk should last between 30 and 40 minutes today. Please do not forget to use the Q&A function as I'm sure our wonderful guest speaker would love to answer any of your questions and also he's here to help you so it's wonderful to make use of that time and also due to the fact that we do get quite a lot of questions and we are limited with regards to time we might not be able to answer every single question that comes through and that's where the upvote function comes in handy. So if you see a question you think hmm I'd like to ask that Utilize the upvote function and we'll try and pick out the most upvoted questions throughout the chat. And if you do have to leave for whatever reason halfway through or you miss the webinar, don't panic. We have got you covered. We are recording this session live and we aim to have the recording onto the relevant platform within your modules within 24 hours. And that's just so that you can go back and watch on demand. Now, in today's webinar, we are going to be joined by the lovely James Kirkup, and he's talking to us all about types of graphic design. Hi, James. Hi. How's it going, everyone? Good evening. Oh, it's good, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. Cold. Thanks so much for joining us. I know, I know we're going to have like a little chat and um, talk all things graphic design. So could we start with kind of your journey, James, into how you got to this point in your career? Yes, we can. Um, how did I get to this point? So uh, in school, um, I was always kind of interested in music and skateboarding and uh, bits of football um, and art. But I, I didn't really know where, where I was going and what I was doing. Um, and then going into kind of college at A-level um, and after that, I kind of took all the things that I was interested in and realised that I kind of wanted to be a graphic designer, even though I didn't really know what a graphic designer was. Uh, I just kind of wanted to make the things that I was into, like CD covers or uh, skateboard adverts and whatnot. Um, so I started out kind of working, for, well, I say working, um, making my own stuff really for lots of bands where I was from down in Brighton. Um, and then from then kind of built a little bit of a portfolio of um, yeah, lots of small little things that I'd done um, and started working. I, I got an internship first, but then eventually kind of started working in London um, at some small design studios. Um, and then that kind of totally changed my perspective on what I actually wanted to do. Um, moved around a fair bit. Uh, and now, 12, 13 years later, I, um, I now run my own design studio uh, called An Open Understanding. That's so cool. <laughs> Thank you, James. Well, with I think one of the main, main questions that we get asked with regards to um, graphic design and with regards to how to get into the career, it's probably first, do you have to go to university to become a graphic design artist and go into that sort of career i didn't uh i was i was honestly this is this is probably not the, the best thing to say um but i was useless at school um i was useless at school i was useless at college um I, i'm not sure i really understood um the uh what was being asked of me when mm -hmm. i was at that at that point um, and I didn't really, I wasn't really sure what I was doing at, at any stage, but I had this, uh, like overarching, I guess, um, route that I, I knew that I wanted to do something here. Um, just the education aspect wasn't always for me. Um, so no, definitely not. Uh, and I know lots of people who, who have and haven't, and, and, um, that's, you know, it's a good thing to go to university mm -hmm. and, and get a degree in, in whichever area uh you're interested in but at the same time i think um where there's a will there's a way yeah 
<laughs> for sure. So what would you say then is your favourite part of your job? What's the favourite part of my job? Um, I think I think now um, and probably throughout my career has always been receiving a kind of new project to work on and whether that's in a new area that might not have worked in before or for a client who's in a, a market that I haven't worked in before that that's always that really exciting part the, the very beginning of a project but also the narrative of, of working on a project the middle and, and then launching it and showing off kind of what you've done is also equally as exciting. And I love how you're talking about sort of the story behind, like the narrative and all of that. So what would your typical day to day then be like for those who are wondering? Um, my day to day has, I guess, changed quite a lot throughout my career from kind of being a junior to middleweight to, to now doing my own thing. So, for instance, now I'm much more involved in the, the business side of things just mm -hmm. as much as the actual designing side of things. Um, and I look after multiple projects throughout a day, whether it's back when I was kind of a junior or middleweight and coming through, I'd maybe just work on one thing at a time, um, which was which was nice thinking back to it now. <laughs> um, but the kind of average day involves catching up with people who are I'm working with on a project or collaborating with um, doing some actual work um, and, and designing some things and then kind of mapping out uh, the rest of my time, to be honest. Uh, a lot of it seems to be time management these days. <laughs> not that that's not exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so then what would you say is perhaps something that you learned along the journey of where you are, where you started from to where you are now that perhaps you didn't expect that you'd learn? Oh, uh, I mean, one big thing I think that always sticks with me is that I always thought that um, when I started out and why I kind of got into graphic design is that I would become this this person that designed things for music. And that was the only thing I'd ever do. Mm. And that was going to be my path. And that that has, you know, for a lot of designers, um, that that has been their path. But for me personally, working in lots of different places um, and I moved around a fair bit, kind of made me completely um, re-navigate what I actually wanted to create and what I was actually good at making as well. And turns out the things that I thought I would be good at, I'm not very good at. And, and <laughs> something else, I was like, oh, this, I'm kind of all right at this. Um, and I think you get that from kind of, yeah, exploring and, um, and yeah, moving around a bit, trying new things. Mm. So you'd encourage people then to try different things? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think when you're when you're younger and you have youth as an advantage, um, you know you you can you can explore things that you're really interested in, um, and and kind of want to explore. But as as you kind of grow and develop throughout your career, you're, you're certainly you're asked, um, especially in jobs, the demand is for you to be able to um, explore lots of different ways of doing something. Uh, and that makes you yeah, kind of navigate that yourself um, and yeah, explore things yourself. And I know that you touched on sort of creating your own portfolio, James. How would one go about making or starting an effective portfolio maybe for college or university that then they can build upon that's a really good question i think um well i ran i recently ran an internship scheme and had lots of people apply who had mm -hmm. varying uh, portfolios some had portfolios where they just had projects that they'd done at college um, or at university and school and whatnot. And some other people had some other things that maybe they tried in their own time. I think if you can um, do stuff in your own time or outside of college or outside of your, your studies, that's amazing. But I don't think... Um, I don't think it's like a deciding factor. I think mm -hmm. if you're if you really want to do this uh, as a as a career, um, you certainly won't be defined by how many extra hours you put in. Um, certainly not by someone like myself, anyway. 
Um, but at the same time, it's it's really important to sometimes see the range of, of um, work that you're interested in actually making, um, bar what you've done uh, in education. So in terms of going back to the portfolio aspect, I think there's lots of great uh, like online services now where you can build portfolios for free, for instance, on Behance uh, or Cargo Collective. They're just two of many of the services out there. But um, I'd say, yeah, if you if you can, if you've got time, do as much and show as much as possible. And if you haven't, don't worry. Just um, just yeah, make sure you've got it all together and organised to show someone. So, so kind of branching off from that, would you say that work experience is perhaps necessary with regards to graphic design and going into a job in graphic design? And if so, how could one get work experience? That is a very good question. Um, work experience, I mean, it's always great to see that someone has already worked somewhere before. Um, but I think anyone in the design industry, we're all aware how hard and competitive mm -hmm. that can be to, to get a placement or an internship or a junior role, um, especially when there's a lot of people kind of fighting in the same space. Um, so I don't think it's vital, but I think if you if you have the means to work on your own at home and kind of work on projects even if they're like imaginary and you just like pick your favorite band or brand or or make up a project um and create work mm -hmm. showing that kind of initiative in your portfolio will make a lot of people look past the fact that you might not have been given an opportunity yet uh, in the industry for sure i mean that's what i did so and I know lots of other people have done that as well. So, Thanks, James. And I'm going in a completely different direction now. But um, someone has asked, what type of graphic design is the most difficult, in your opinion? <laughs> what type of graphic design is the most difficult? That is, um, uh, is that an interesting question to answer. Well, I think graphic design in 2021, just had to men mentally check that was still the year, um it definitely there's is so, <laughs> <laughs> there's so there's so many avenues that you can you can go down in this mm. in this industry which is i think why it's so exciting and and such an amazing like um uh, career path mm. um so for instance like in my world i kind of work on brand identity and creating kind of visual identities for mm. brands and that can involve illustration, typography, web design, packaging design. Um, and in each of those areas, there's always someone who's really good at one aspect. Um, what's the hardest aspect? Um, probably being able to marry them all together, um, which doesn't really happen for a lot of people until they've worked for quite a while just because they need the experience of understanding how one thing affects lots of other things and that mm -hmm. decision making aspect um kind of changes how you uh, become maybe creative in your approach so i don't know if there's one aspect that's necessarily the hardest it's probably yeah like i say bringing them all together yeah. um at the end so then hopefully that answers that yeah, it definitely did. I think that's one of the most difficult questions to ask because obviously everyone says different things, if that makes sense, and doesn't really know where to go with it. But thank you for yeah. answering it. And so how would you say then, to how would you make yourself stand out in the industry? That's another good, <laughs> good one. <laughs> um, how do you make yourself stand up? <coughs> Sorry. I think... Um, I think it is really interesting when designers have their own style. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I had a style without even realising it. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of young designers do have a style without realising it yet. Um, it's maybe what you're interested in and, and, and how you convey that in your own portfolio. Um, and I think that that is how you make yourself stand out you, you do something a little bit different don't necessarily um 
I think I think now as well with the tools that are already available to to people, it's it's very easy to um, kind of replicate how other people present themselves. And I think if you can do that in a different way, um, in your own way, um, that is that's how you stand out. Um, but also, I'd say that it's it's not the most important thing to stand out. Um, sometimes it's actually important to be able to replicate um, and and do what a lot of other people are doing. Mm -hmm. um, so I certainly wouldn't make it like a, a thing to concentrate on too much. But it's also great if you can do it. <laughs> so what is something then that you wish you had known before becoming a graphic designer? I wish I had known. I think... Um, I think what I would have loved to have known is how many um, avenues there are in the industry. I think, like I said before, when I was starting out, I just wanted to get into music and just make stuff for, for bands. Um, and I didn't really have a, any kind of understanding of kind of all these different routes you could, you could take uh, your creativity in your career. Um, and I think another thing to add would maybe be how much um, your kind of intuitiveness is important um, and kind of, you know, not necessarily like working extra hours or, or working weekends, none of that. But um, but just kind of yeah, also doing some side projects and you're bringing your own work to your portfolio. Um, yeah, I wish I'd known that. Thanks, James. <laughs> So what skills then would you say are perhaps necessary in order to become a graphic designer? Um, I think like being quite passionate about uh, creativity in general is really important because some people become very kind of, they become experts in certain fields, like I said before, in typography or, or web design. And that's amazing and, and will happen throughout your career. You're kind of, probably like hone into something for like a few years and then maybe change it up. Um, but the skills that are important are, um, I guess, being a bit of a team player and kind of being up for exploring lots of different things and doing things that are maybe outside of your comfort zone um, creatively. Um, yeah, th those things are important. And I know we talked about your sort of journey into becoming a graphic designer and where you are today, but what ultimately was your inspiration? <laughs> it, what, what was it that ignited that sort of flame for you for graphic design? Uh, wow. My, I think my inspiration over the years has changed quite a bit, but my original inspiration was, was older designers uh like a peter savile type designer who um couldn't didn't use a computer for instance you know he was kind of taking images from books and 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 different references from for type from from all over the place and bringing them all together which i think now is kind of lost in our industry because everything is done over the internet and is very quick to just kind of discover new ideas um so that was like an original inspiration i guess um, and also now the inspiration is probably trying to kind of, um, take what all of these huge design studios around the world are capable of and proving that you can replicate that and, and, and be as good as them without the kind of big team that they've got. That's, that's like a newfound inspiration maybe that works quite well. Yeah. Thanks James. And I know we talked about difficult types of um, graphic design, but have you ever faced any difficulties on your journey? And if so, what were the difficulties that you faced? So many. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, when I was when I first uh, got a job, um, well, actually, before that, in my first internship, I didn't really have any idea how any of the software worked. Um, I had a base understanding, like I had a copy of some stuff at home that I'd like play around in. 
and that was my first learning curve that the, the guys that I was interning with really needed me to kind of up my game and how I was using the software. That's number one. Uh, number two, I made some huge mistakes in uh, when I was doing some print design uh, at some points where I really had, again, had no real understanding of, of the technical side of what I was doing and needed help and maybe didn't actually have that help at that time. Um, but it was we got through it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I think I think there's been lots of different hurdles, but mm -hmm. along the way i've I've been very fortunate to work with people who were senior than me at the time who who helped me through that. And I think if you as and when you you get a job or or you you work on your own or with other people, those people are there to to help you with those with those hurdles. Um, yeah. But also, so is the the design community itself is um, is really quite amazing online. A lot of people are very open to to you messaging them. Just message them. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've had plenty of people kind of message me in the past now. Oh, I didn't know whether I sh could or should. I definitely, if you've got any problems, you know, I think a lot of a lot of people are quite um, yeah acceptable to 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 offering their assistance. Thanks, James. And with I know you're talking about software because obviously everything has kind of developed over the past few years, and technology has advanced so much, perhaps beyond my scope um but not to many of those who are watching so are there any programs um or software that you would recommend someone sort of looking into and using for graphic design 100 percent, yeah so i think i guess the last the last couple of years has seen like a, a big change in how um in the software that we're we're using um when I started out, it was all about Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, yeah. InDesign, Dreamweaver, all these apps that were very expensive and I couldn't afford mm. uh, on my personal computer, um, but had it work. But now um, there's apps like Figma and Sketch that mm -hmm. are completely kind of revolutionizing the industry and are much more affordable. I think Figma works out about $15 a month. Um, mm -hmm which and 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 those apps are now kind of helping studios like me for instance run entire projects through from the art direction to actually making the work to then handing it over to a client building a website um really kind of managing everything in one space so i personally i'm i'm a big uh, figma fan so yeah uh, if you haven't heard of it check it out if you have keep going with it because it's um yeah it's 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 certainly the future and would you say then that graphic design is a competitive industry um it definitely is i think yeah. but in in lots of different ways um i think when you're when you're looking for internships or uh, junior level it can feel very competitive um, but one thing I would say uh, in that respect is that one thing I found with it, with a lot of people who, for instance, applied for the internship, mm -hmm. they'd they'd respond saying, "I feel like I'm kind of hitting a brick wall with with applying at places." One thing I'd say to that is is try not to apply to the the kind of obvious places, the mm -hmm. the big design studios or the ones that you always see in in maybe like Create for View or on Instagram try and kind of dig a little bit deeper and find smaller studios who firstly they won't have as many people applying for them uh secondly they'll they'll still be up for for kind of giving out internships or junior roles um and also you're more likely to get a response from the smaller studios mm -hmm. I think the bigger studios are, are always inundated with thousands of people so they never really get a designer replying to you it will be and a, a kind of admin uh, yeah. someone in an admin role which is just how they they have to operate that because they're so much bigger and um, so i'd say that that's the kind of competitiveness that, uh, that maybe the start yeah but definitely don't let it kind of hinder your process because the progress sorry because you will you will get there but i'd say it's it's also competitive for the actual design studios themselves mm -hmm. you know a lot of us are competing to work on the same projects um then we're also competing to try and get a slightly bigger project so we can 
maybe grow a little bit. Um, mm. But that competitiveness also, um, I think, excels and, and, and makes our kind of creativity stronger as well because mm. we're always trying to push to, to make something better next time or yeah. do something a bit better. Um, so, yeah, it's a competitive world, but don't let it put you off. No, thank you. I think it's important that obviously everyone knows and, and it's nice to know that it shouldn't hinder their progress either. Um, with regards to, because I know a lot of the uh, our lovely people who are watching today will be doing sort of A-levels or GCSEs or be doing some sort of um, academic work. Are there any particular criteria that they need to have, i.e. subjects, within their GCSEs and A-levels in order to go on to sort of graphic design? I think in the industry as a whole, being quite well-rounded uh, mm. is really important. So not just having uh, art or photography or design as a subject. Um, if there's something else you're good at, no, it's really important to have the kind of like an understanding of English and uh, like if you go to college or you business studies or film studies, there's lots of it's like kind of other things that you can take from other subjects that you can then bring back into your design um, career, which are, are really important. Um, I completely failed at photography and fine art, but somewhere in there, there's some there's there's some things that I bring back. Yeah. And now with running my own business, I did business studies for a year, and I was also not very good at business studies. Mm -hmm. But there was something in there that I liked that's kind of helped me out now for sure. Um, and I know I know a lot of friends my age and, and older and younger who who studied completely different things and have, have, have still got into design or, or advertising, um, so on and so forth. That, that yeah, found have found everything they've done really important. So yeah. so yeah, a well rounded approach is important, I guess. Oh, I love that, and I think this is probably a question that lots of people may struggle with themselves um so we've been asked how do you deal with art block art block yeah like writer's block it's, yeah <laughs> it, it happens um how do i deal with it <laughs> well i think again this this question kind of changes throughout your career and and maybe how you deal with it changes the more experienced you become i think when you're younger and um say you're in college or maybe you're in your like first job mm. you can deal with it by just reaching out and and admitting defeat there's nothing wrong with kind of admitting to someone i don't know where to take this or i don't know what to do with this or i'm not feeling in a good place today I'm, i don't know if i'm going to get anywhere there's there's certainly nothing wrong with that and and actually by doing that you'll you'll probably get over it in some way because someone might say have you tried this or have you done this i think if you're on your own uh, and if you're working on your own and you've got you've got the block um take a rest yeah. like step away from from it all um i think a, a good a good person I once worked with always told us to kind of go home, come back tomorrow, and and by doing that, your your perception of where you were stuck, um, suddenly disappeared, or or maybe yeah. it was slightly still still there, but you 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 you'd know what to do next. And I think as your career goes on, uh, if you decide to kind of continue in graphic design, you it will it will come at very random points. Um, but I've always found that sometimes it's because something is going on outside of work mm. that's probably far more important than, than what I'm doing in work. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, yeah, where I've needed to maybe take a rest. Uh, whether I ever took a rest, I'm not sure. But, <laughs> but, but yeah, it, it happens. But, but I guess, again, don't get, um, don't get put off by it. Yeah. Um, it happens and, and you'll deal with it for sure. And do you have any advice james for someone who knows that they definitely want to go into graphic design but they're just quite not sure what aspect yet yeah sure i mean that's a kind of tricky one to answer directly because there's lots of i guess if you if you've got if you've got the time say you're still studying and, and you've mm. got a while left just just don't rush it take your time mm -hmm. keep exploring lots of different avenues keep like thinking about it 
uh, it doesn't maybe sound like a great answer, but actually giving it some time um, is important. Um, I certainly, the first place that I worked at, I, I would never be able to work there now. 10 yeah. years later, I'm, I'm a completely different person. And I think, like I said before, what I originally thought I'd do versus what I do now is like completely different. Um, but in terms of getting into it, yeah, just just keep exploring lots of different avenues. And and maybe if maybe if you're getting stuck with um, where you are now, explore something that you haven't yet. Like yeah. think about it in a completely different way or um or or try and try and maybe use use tools like Instagram, which most design studios are on, if not everyone, to kind of just have a little explore and, and maybe you'll find that you'll be like, actually illustration is something that I haven't looked at before, or, or even photography. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, you'll get you'll get around it, hopefully. Well, I just want to say a massive thank you to you, James, for joining us today. And also, we've had such wonderful questions come through and such amazing answers from yourself as well. So I know your, no time, I know your time is very valuable. So I just wanted to say we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us. And um, no problem. And a massive thank you as well to everyone who has asked your questions. They've been really, really helpful, um, I think, to everyone as well. Now, just a reminder, please don't forget to get all of your work submitted and get the programme completed by the 12th of November. And that's so that you're eligible for your certificate. But don't forget, you can get all those important dates back in Module 1 if you do need reminding. Again, a humongous thank you to James. A massive best of luck for the rest of your programme. And we'll see you all very soon. <laughs>